Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this online uh, version of Open Belgium. I want to quickly thank our three main sponsors, Mono Design, Microsoft and Agentschap Binnenlands Bestuur. But without further ado, I want to give the floor to Steven. One moment, please. Getting started. Does that work for you? Yes. OK. So uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Stefan Chobel. I'm um, representing Etico. I'm the work group leader, um, the technical specifications of the TNITS platform. And TNITS stands for Transport Network intelligent transportation systems. So today I will be talking about um, sharing open road data in Flanders and Europe, the TNITS way. I will give a, uh, an introduction first and then Lien and Geert will um, continue focusing on the Flemish context and giving you examples of what TNITS is about and what it means. Um, so without further ado, Here's the overview of my uh, 10 minutes introduction. So context, introduction to TNITS, quick word on the TNITS GO project. And I will also show you an overview of the European Open Road Data um, Exchange Services and um, stop with a, an outlook. So first of all, on the context. So um, of course, everyone is concerned about road safety and um, vehicle manufacturers over the last year have developed a number of technologies to support drivers keeping lane, keeping safe speed, um, you know, even um, making sure that the car um, drives uh, correctly and sh uh, shifts gear, things like that. So these are called ADAS, Advanced Driver Ass Assistance Systems, and they typically work with um, a map in on board of the vehicle that can that map can actually be for the driver for vi a visualization aid but it could also be for the car just to as I mentioned before um, you know pick the right gear in an automatic gearbox so that map is is quite important uh, if it's on board then of course it needs to be maintained because as it is a representation of the environment, it needs to be correct. And that's a crucial thing, the maintenance of the digital map. So the leading map makers have invested in a number of technologies to collect information on the road environment and bring that to their maps, to update their maps. Uh, think about this type of street view vehicles, think about uh, floating car data, so monitoring either your mobile phone or your navigation device in your car, and use these anonymous traces to update their maps. But one important aspect of uh, sources for changes for maps comes from government sources. That's authoritative data. A lot of that data already uh, in Europe uh, is being published or made available as open data. What is important is because the leading map makers, they have high quality data map databases already, the focus is on the changes of the road data. So not necessarily the bulk, uh, as is data, but the changes of the road data. And there's also a common data model and interface required to do that. Because if you imagine like a, a leading map maker, if they uh, get access to authoritative data in one country, they would prefer that it is that the same access would apply for um, authorities in different in different countries. So a common data model and interface, and that's exactly where TNITS jumps in. So TNITS is, an, on one side, it's an association. It's a platform under the uh, ERTICO umbrella. But it's also a technical specification. So it's under the SEN technical specification. Um, 
technical committee, um, what is it? 278, working group seven, that's the ITS um, group. And it's also a building block for today's and future mobility data space. So on the right hand side of the slide, you see a number of building blocks and each um, represents a domain where standardization of interfaces of data models has happened in the in the past or in the recent past. So on the bottom, you see vehicle sensor data. There is a, a standardization activity ongoing uh, called Sensoris to deal with that. For traffic information, you might have heard of DATEX. For multimodal, there is also a group that's working on um, a technical sp uh, specifications. So there's, I would say, complementarity in the um, technical specification for the exchange of mobility data. And on the top right, you see TNITS as one of the building blocks for base layer data or base map data. So TNITS is a trusted and market-driven mobility data exchange service. Trusted because authorities provide the data and market-driven is because leading map makers are actually um, uh, you know heavily involved in the uh, both the association and the technical discussions and also the strategy of the platform so it's once the um, i would say road authorities adopt the or implement such a service then they are, will be sure that at the end the map makers will consume the data and update their maps accordingly so what's in focus? As I mentioned before, TNITS represents the data model, the format, the infrastructure to exchange primarily changes of road attributes for um, the maintenance of digital maps for different ITS services. So we're talking about typically static road attributes, attributes as speed limits, traffic restrictions, warning information, uh, EV, uh, alternative fuel charging point, lane and so information and so on so when we look at um, a typical um, TNITS you see yeah TNITS uh, infrastructure in place it's at the site of the road authorities when they publish changes of road data they do it in a TNITS compliant way and that's the um, the bridge so to speak to the map makers um, TNITS does not address how the map makers provide uh, fresh maps to um, the users, be it the car, a roadside unit, a traffic center, a port portable navigation device, or an in-vehicle in system. That's outside the scope of TN TNITS. What is also interesting is in the red circle, you see that the arrow goes both ways, and that's the so-called so you see the, the the changes streaming from left to right, so towards the road, to, to, towards the map makers. But there's also a feedback li link that's uh, specified, and that uh, actually reflects information that is provided by the map makers back to the road authorities, uh, which describes um, how the map makers actually. Uh, decoded and integrated that data. So let me go to the next slide. Um, so a word on the TNITS association. So I mentioned it's coordinated by Etico. Um, currently, the members are either road authorities, MOP and service providers, ITS and transport organization. And you see some names. So we have a, a lot or a strong Nordic um, presence in the road administrations. Uh, we, we have the main map makers in Europe on board, TomTom Tom here and GeoJunction. So the association is supporting the European policy on RTTI and ITS. Um, it supports the standardization. So there, this technical specification is available. It offers implementation support. So if a, a road authority wants to implement such a TNITS service, it can get support from the association. Uh, and that support might be the access to the uh, reference model. 
So the UML that describes the data content and the, the exchange infrastructure. Um, then it's also about building uh, the brand and the trust. Um, so at the end, at the driver's side, at the end of the data users, it needs to be known that the data, uh, the maps are maintained via a TNITS process uh, as that increases the reliability of that information and therefore also the service. Um, we have worked for over uh, seven years in strong uh, cooperation with the European Commission, with SEN, with the Joint Research Center, and also with uh, ITS associations. And we are not doing that alone. We are doing that um, uh, together with a number of partner standardization groups. I will not go in detail about them, but uh, just um, understand that there is a strong link, of course, with dynamic information, uh, where whereas we focus on static road data, there's a, also um, a community that's working on uh, traffic data, so dynamic information, traffic data. That's the DataX2 and the Traffic Management 2.0 uh, platforms that work on that. There's the link to automated driving via CCAM and via the AutoDrive forum. There's the link with the National Access Point program. And then there's, of course, the link to SEN as a uh, uh, standardization um, body in Europe. Uh, one word on the, or a few words on the TNITS GO project. So it's a CEF project. It will actually end this year. There are 20 uh, partners in Europe. And the aim is to build at least 15 TNITS services across Europe, which publish changes of road attributes, typically minimum on the 10T network. So there are a number of partners there that provide also um, updates for lower road classes. I will come that, uh, to that immediately. But um, and, and that uh, project is also supporting all standardization and implementation initiatives. I mentioned the feedback loop. Here is where it's being prototyped um, and also new features for or new attributes for new cases are being explored in this uh, project. I will not go into uh, great detail on this uh, slide. However, I would like to emphasize. So this is the, um, the overview of the TNITS services today uh, in Europe. So on the, on the top row, you have uh, the country for which the service um, uh, or who has implemented the service. You say who is the prov data provider. You see the status. There is the coverage of the updates, whether it's like for a full country and applicable for the 10T or all roads, whatever. On the So somewhere in the middle, you see the map attributes, which attributes and features are supported. And typically, as you can see, speed limits are of top priority. Uh, all the road information like street names, route numbers, that type of information, road classes, uh, lane information is also um, made available uh, by a number of um, uh, road authorities. It indicates the location referencing method, either OpenLR or GML coordinate string. It indicates the updates, so the um, frequency of the updates. So you see that some uh, countries are providing daily up, uh, uploads or daily changes of road attributes on their network. There's the link to the service. There is a mention if the service is also available via the National Access Point program. And on the right hand side, a little bit bigger, is the is stated the data license under which the data is provided. So um, the second row, you see Flanders. That's the one you will be um, hearing more about on the next uh, presentation. So what's the link with open data? First of all, um, because of the origin of TNITS uh, and, and the fact that uh, that is 
um, was supported by the European Commission by a number of research projects. The results of funded uh, projects are typically open uh, as much as possible. So that's that's one thing. On the other hand, um, from the um, overview seen before, that you can see that many or all, almost all of the data providers offer data under open data license. Uh, uh, Creative Common Four is um, mentioned the most. Attribution is probably around 50%. That means that you have to declare that you are uh, using, or you have to um, indicate the source of the information. I've seen no share alike conditions, uh, which is very important to maximize the reuse of that information. There is the technical specification with SEN, which is available for marginal costs. And of course, you are free to use the specification to implement. So on the implementation itself, the web service to expose the data, there is no, there are no um, costs involved. And uh, there are some authorities who do not use an open data license yet, uh, but use the TNITS specification and the interface for their pilot service. Uh, IGN in France, so the National Geographic Institute in France is, is an example of that, um, of such an authority. Now, that brings me to almost my last slide. So, I'm not going to go too much in detail, but this is the roadmap for TNITS. So, we're now in 2021. We will finalize the TNITS GO project and um, implement the feedback loop. We will um, have activities to include TNITS um, work under the new National Access Point program. In 2020, TNITS will, of course, support the intelligent speed assistance, which is mandated by the European Commission in their uh, general safety, what is it, GR, GSR program for new cars. So by 2020, all new cars on the European market will need to have a um, speed assistance uh, technology. So TNITS is going to support with fresh speed limit information. So 2023, we will also see the involvement of uh, cities and commercial road operators. So currently the focus uh, is on ro national road authorities, but that will shift in the future because there might be um, uh, important bigger cities, metropolitan cities that uh, have um, important data to share in the TNITS way without going through uh, a national uh, body. So 2025, extended road attributes and also work on automated licensing. And 27, with support for the um, higher level of SAE automation, so uh, for self-driving cars. And on the further horizon, we expect that there will be some harmonized worldwide system in place where there's a single process for sharing and reusing road data. Um, one have, has to keep in mind that the map makers who consume the TNITS data, they are typically global players like Tom, Tom and here. And that's in fact the best way how they can consume the data, and the best way how they can um, forward the data to the end users. And that's, so the end user is typically the citizen. And, you know, if you be benefit the citizen, that's of course in the interest of the, um, of the authorities. So along the path, you will see the maintenance of the technical specification and of course the growth of the uh, community. So if you just tuned in and um, the, you know, do not really understand what I was talking about. So here it is in a nutshell, the platform is so TNIT as a platform technical specification to exchange changes of road data in Europe. The focus is on static road data. Um, and that's a key component in the mobility data space in Europe and outside Europe. The road authorities provide trusted data to map and service providers uh, and help thus to improve road safety and ensure efficient road use. And currently there are a number of operational services in Europe and they share, most of them share their data 
under open data license. More information you can find on the links. You can uh, have a look at them after the call or uh, later on, on the, watching the movie. Uh, latest news, we recently had a webinar on TNITS success stories, which you might um, want to have a look at. So that's it from my side. I conclude my presentation and I give over the floor to Lien and Geert. Uh, thank you, Stefan, for this uh, interesting uh, presentation. Um, so in this uh, second part, we are going to focus more on uh, uh, the case of Flanders. Uh, so we want to make it a, a bit more concrete. Um, and at the end of the session, uh, you can uh, ask questions if there are questions and we will uh, answer them one by one. You can also write them in the in the chat uh, so you don't uh, forget them. Um, before I start my presentation, I want to do uh, a, a small poll to see uh, whether uh, there are al already some people in the audience who, who know uh, about our project. Um, so you can answer just uh, yes or no, um, so we can have an overview of, of that. Okay, so I, uh, I see that the most people answered it. Um, I will publish uh, the results in just uh, a second. <clears throat> so I see that uh, about uh, uh, a third of the people already know about uh, the project. So I'm going to give uh, these people a quick uh, recap in the beginning of our presentation. Then I'm going to focus more uh, on the TNITS service itself. Um, then uh, further on, we are going to uh, talk about the challenges we tackled in the project, um, about uh, talk about one uh, proposed solution or mobile app moving and then in the end we are going to address our future plans um, both in the short term and in the longer term um, then uh, at the end also uh, my colleague Geert van Gaver will give a presentation uh, uh, a demonstration uh, of uh, the, the two applications so the project uh, Snellet Vlaanderen is actually a cooperation between the Department of Mobility and uh, Public Works and, and the Agency of Roads and Traffic. Um, so here you can see an overview of the project team. Uh, you can see the name of Geert van Gaver. He's the application owner, but he, um, so you hear more about him uh, at the end. And uh, my name is Lien Bakelands. I am the business analyst and also the person behind the, the help desk. So um, the project has actually uh, three goals. Um, the first one is uh, to create one unique authentic data source for all the traffic signs in Flanders. Um, so to uh, accomplish this, we uh, first had to merge two existing databases. Uh, the first one, uh, the traffic sign database of MOA was, uh, was developed for the cities and municipalities. And then you also had the road asset database uh, of AWV for the major roads. Um, so uh, it was uh, chosen to uh, develop the road asset database of AWV further and therefore we did a gap analysis to uh, know more about the needs of the cities and the municipalities. Uh, this was done in 2017 and in 2018 the, Verkeer, the new Verkeersborde Vlaanderen application was launched. Um, Secondly, we want to derive a speed map for Flanders. And then third, uh, thirdly, uh, we want to publish this as open data. So uh, on the one hand for uh, the TNITS service for the map makers and on the, the 
on the other hand, also for uh, yeah, just uh, for the, the general public um, as a GIS services on uh, the HEOPUNT website of Flanders. So, uh, firstly, how did we derive these uh, speed limits? Um, so, the, the traffic signs or point locations and then uh, the, the road network are lines. Um, so, we, we project actually these uh, traffic sign locations onto the, 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 the streets, the lines, um, with an algorithm that actually drives as a car through the whole road Flemish road network. When it passes a, a traffic sign, uh, the attributed uh, speed is uh, uh, also uh, gets uh, um, will uh, be on the speed on the, the line, and from then on, uh, this uh, speed will be uh, the case for for that line and further on, as you can see in the example. Um, the result is an automatically generated speed map, which takes into account the updates uh, that were uh, done uh, during the day and then uh, process them uh, each night. And then the next day you can see uh, the results uh, as a new speed map. Um, the algorithm uses a number of things. So first, the traffic signs, for example, a build-up area sign that uh, um, um, has a yeah says that uh, the speed has to be 50 kilometers an hour. Then the road morphology of uh, the the road network and also the implicit speed limits that are uh, that you can find in the legislation. For instance, when there is no traffic sign present, uh, the speed is 70 kilometers an hour. Uh, the result is a. Uh, uh, for yeah, such as this, but then for whole Flanders. So here you can see the example of uh, the city of Turnhout, um, and then on the right uh, for uh, Leopoldsburg. So for example, if you come uh, from the west in uh, here on the right, you can see uh, the orange color uh, that uh, says uh, the speed is 70 kilometers an hour. Then you pass the build-up area sign of Leopoldsburg and from then on the speed is uh, 50 kilometers an hour. So uh, all this data is uh, is, chair is shared uh, within the TNITS project. Uh, here on the slide you can find the link to the, the service itself. Um, which was developed as a pilot project uh, in the common exchange format Rosate. So we took all the traffic signs in the database and, and tried to map them on this format. We started with only the speed limits and uh, the traffic signs with, uh, with a speed limit. And then we also uh, uh, took into account more traffic signs, uh, as you can see here on the slide. Uh, this is only a, a selection. You can find the whole list uh, on our website. So all this information is shared with the map makers TomTom Tom and here. Um, as uh, Stefan already discussed, so uh, there only the updates are shared. So you have uh, the updates performed by road authorities, um, they uh, appear in the TNITS service, so they can, can be used by TomTom and -Tom here to process these updates. Um, and, and this will be available in the products, uh, so GPS devices and other devices. Um, and they will take this into account when they calculate uh, your route from A to B. Um, and as such, this has a positive impact on the traffic safety and livability. Um, then we also offer other uh, publicly available data on um, with uh, web map services and with future uh, feature services. Uh, so firstly, the graphical representation of traffic signs. So really uh, that you can see how the traffic sign looks looks like uh, like uh, it is uh, visualized in the application itself. Then you have also point locations. Um, that you can uh, use to uh, do queries, for instance, and also all the derived data sets. Um, so firstly, the speed limits, but also other um, speed zones like um, 
build-up areas, highway zones, and uh, residential areas, for example. Uh, for people who do not who don't have access to GIS uh, software, they can also um, go to the Geopunt homepage uh, on the map. You can also visualize the speed limits and the, the traffic signs. Then what were uh, the challenges in the product and the project? So uh, data quality was a big challenge. Uh, we used two data sources. So firstly, the official Flemish road network, Wegeregister, uh, where we use the morphology and the driving directions. Um, so we don't take into account unpaved roads or private roads, but if this uh, data is not uh, accurately available uh, in the road network, then uh, this will cause errors. Also, the driving directions were only available on the major roads and not uh, for the smaller ones. And this is also uh, this is a bit problematic uh, at some locations. Then uh, we use, of course, also the traffic sign database um, where we had uh, the challenge of getting all the municipalities and cities uh, to uh, uh, update their database. So, so for a number of municipalities, the um, their traffic sign database is quite outdated um, and they, yeah, they find it difficult to start updating them. So we, we try to... Uh, uh, encourage them to do this uh, through giving workshops and also uh, we try to make on-site data collection more efficiently. I will talk a bit more about that uh, in the further presentation. Uh, we, there are also some cities that use external software, so they don't work in our application, but they use uh, uh, other software providers and there we are talking to them to uh, synchronize their data so we can also use it uh, to derive our speed limit map. Um, so to get the users on board, we did workshops in each Flemish province. Uh, we uh, talked about tips and tricks and uh, gave some training. We also have a website, Verkeersborden.Vlaanderen, where you can find uh, manuals for the applications, uh, more information about our open data, and also frequently asked questions. Um, and also our uh, help desk is all always available, uh, so you can send a mail with a question to verkeersborde.vlaanderen.be. Um, then um, we, uh, I want to talk a bit more about our mobile app MoveIn. So uh, we, we understood from our users that they had problems to do uh, to do on-site inspections. They went on to on site with a paper map and tried uh, and started writing on that map uh, which uh, traffic signs were outdated in the database and which were uh, okay and so on. But this takes a, a lot of time. So therefore we developed our uh, mobile app Move-In uh, very quickly actually in a, in a few months. Um, so we focused on the minimal usable product. We asked our users uh, what is uh, really the most uh, essential, what do you need uh, to do these inspections. Um, and we uh, launched a beta version so the a number of uh, users could already test uh, the application uh, very quickly and the results were quite uh, positive um, so we also focused on user friendliness um, on a mobile device because uh, when you go on terrain you of of course want to use a tablet or even a smart smartphone so it had to be uh, easy to use on a small screen um, the big um, advantage of using Move-In is that you, uh, when you do an inspection, you have this date of on-site inspection, with, which is an important measure of data quality. Uh, because, of course, our users of our open data, they don't know which of these cities and municipalities is really updating their database uh, or which ones are uh, outdated. And with this uh, date of on-site inspection, um, you get a, an important measure of data quality. 
Um, so, uh, what were the results of our efforts? So, in 2018, the Verkeersbord of Vlaanderen application was launched. Um, and uh, you can see that uh, a number of uh, municipalities uh, got uh, on board quite quickly. Uh, you also see the, the hedged municipalities that they use external software. And then it, uh, now, uh, quite recently in 2021, you see that uh, the map is turning blue and that uh, more and more uh, municipalities are starting to use uh, our applications. We also track our user uh, amount of users with Google Analytics uh, from uh, 2019 on. And you can see the rising trend in user counts uh, to 2020. And also for a move-in that we launched at the end of 2019, you can see that it uh, was uh, really popular in the spring of uh, 2020. And we believe it, that it has it's also the consequence of the COVID-19 measures when a number of employees of local authorities uh, had to do different jobs because they couldn't do their regular tasks. So actually for COVID-19, uh, uh, so it was actually a good thing for our traffic sign database. Then what are our future plans? So we want to bridge the digital gap between on-site inspection and database input further. So actually our vision there is that you take a picture of a traffic sign and it is automatically updated in our database. Of course, uh, this is uh, something for the long term and uh, we are not uh, there yet, but this is uh, what we want to accomplish in the future. Um, other plans uh, are uh, deriving weight restrictions because we now focus on speed zones and we also want to derive other uh, interesting data sets from traffic signs. Uh, we are also integrating with other application. So as uh, Stefan told you, the focus is on static data sets, but we are also looking into how we can incorporate dynamic road signs within the Mobili Data project. Um, then we also have uh, a new uh, application, ERG, in Flanders uh, for uh, uh, making the local decision, mobility decisions um, publicly available um, within the LBLOD project. So we want to make a link between uh, a mobility decision by a local authority and the traffic signs um, that are linked to that uh, decision. And then we have also a new version of HEPOT and we also want to uh, um, see what we can do with uh, temporary traffic signs, but that is uh, only just uh, starting. Then we also want to do a redesign of the existing application. It was launched in 2018 uh, as a new version of an old application. So it is uh, already quite, uh, yeah, quite old and uh, we want to tackle uh, technical depth and improve our data model and of course keep uh, all the users on board. And then uh, also in the TNITS project, we want to look into the feedback loop, what can we can do with this in our application and also the new, uh, uh, go to the, the new uh, standard. Um, so this was uh, everything for me, and I want to give the floor to Geert van Gaver, who will uh, give you an, uh, an overview of how our applications uh, work. Okay. Okay, uh, hello everyone. I'm uh, Geert van Gerver. I'm uh, the application owner of Moving and the Traffic Sign Database. Uh, I work for the Agency for Roads and Traffic. And in the next 15 minutes, uh, I give you a short uh, demo of the Moving app and the Traffic Sign Database. Uh, first, I want to start with Moving because that's the most important thing to uh, give some inspections of the existing, existing um, 
traffic signs, but also uh, you can add new ones, uh, for instance. It's in fact a web app, so I can use it on my browser, but uh, when you have uh, Chrome installed on your iOS or on, under your Android device, you can uh, use it mobile. So uh, I go, uh, I zoom in, I can choose here uh, my uh, background cards, uh, auto photos of GRB or uh, our regular uh, background cards. When I zoom in, they will appear. You see the black dots and the purple ones. Uh, that's uh, where I have permission to. So uh, the purple ones I can uh, manage. The black ones are in uh, fact uh, the traffic signs that are uh, that are from the local authorities. So I work for uh, Agency of Roads and Highways. So. Here, this road is one uh, of ours, so I can uh, manage the traffic signs there. I can also uh, ch uh, click on one, and then you see which traffic sign there is uh, located on that place. So you can see here uh, we have a, lot, a bunch of, of uh, direct uh, traffic signs. Uh, I can also click on one that's not in my permission, so I can see what's uh, behind or in the side streets of uh, our main road. There's all, also a legend, so I can see uh, what is, uh, just happened to our traffic signs. Right now, I have done none of the control uh, tools, so all there are no recent controls uh, here. I can also, without the signs that are not in my uh, supervision or not in my authority and then i can start a control uh, first of all i can check one start control and then i can choose between eh, remove it change it or there is no action uh, necessary when i put no action necessary i can still uh, take a new photograph of the sign uh, in fact so i can uh, uh, take one here i can Take this photograph, I open it, and I can even uh, remove this. Uh, yeah, it's uh, on a test and integration site, so uh, there is some problems with the photo. So I can remove this photograph and add this uh, new one. I click on send, and you can see there is a control um, right now uh, that needs to process uh, in the traffic sign database. Also, I can. Uh, remove some uh, for instance i click on remove um, i can even choose which uh, one of the traffic signs will i remove i think uh, before for instance only the under traffic uh, sign here i will remove and the three other uh, will remain so i can also add a new photo i don't not gonna do it uh, right now and I send it. Uh, I can remove a whole of uh, everything. Then I check, uh, check all the, the things here, uh, click to remove and send it. Or I can change one. Um, I can start control. I can say, uh, change it and i say uh, at c4390 uh, uh, 43 here 90 on my uh, and i can take a new picture for instance i just uh, select one it's not the right one but just on the demo so it uh, doesn't matter i can uh, remove this picture because it's not the good one and I send it and then uh, the last one so eh, um, I can add a new one so when I click in the card for instance I can take my auto photos because it's a it's more uh, it's better to, to look where did you pick uh, the new uh, the new traffic sign for instance I want to, s to set here a new traffic sign I just click in the card. I said start new uh, traffic sign and I give you my uh, state of uh, the direction 
which it seems when the the cars are driving so in this uh thing i it's uh that direction that i should uh set my new traffic sign i choose the side of the road in this fact right i go to control uh, i set in my uh at for instance um also a c43 with 90 and uh b9 uh with 400 of uh and the 90 will be 900 millimeters uh, tall also i can add a photo and i can send it and you can see when i go back to the regular site you can see here uh, with a cross in it it's a new uh traffic sign that i uh put into the database so uh now i i've done my work and moving so you can uh go along on the streets uh check every sign that you uh pass and then you go for the other work you open the Verkeersborden Flanders uh, application on the, um, so here uh, yeah, I'm still on tests uh, on here I hope you see it uh, otherwise I have to you see here the controls on terrain and I have uh, for instance I have five so uh, here you see uh, the user which uh, the text which I had it I added the date uh, it's it's a new one to change to remove it you can see here the status uh, the owner of the, the traffic sign so this is uh, district Purs. I see the, the traffic signs and where the traffic sign is located so this is the N16 in Bornem uh, and I can see here the pictures I added uh, to the so I can go uh, when I use the spyglass I can go to the uh, traffic sign is that and you can see here now it's uh, selected and I can then do the action in fact and the action is in fact the green logos or that you see here so when I click on the green logo my action is done so when I select another one and reset we re reselect um, the traffic and you see the photo is added then I choose the next one was uh, remove one traffic sign over the bunch I go uh, are you sure you want to, to remove the, the plate and you see it's directly removed the others uh, because there were three uh f 33 a's uh so i removed one i can check it also and i click on okay and it's done then here i want to remove the total uh graphic sign are you sure to remove totally i say yes oh and here he sets is a temporary a sign of it so I can remove it so it's normal so I can't I first have to uh, set the the temporary or the plant uh, traffic sign on the right spot and then I can remove it when I want to here uh, I want to change one so uh, here I set in my um, seat right not right now but I can uh, I set to add a C4390 so I go here to the C uh, section and C43 I choose 900 no kilometers uh, added and the signal it's the speeds uh, regime is 90 so I click on OK and it will be added on the D7 it's OK I click on OK the photo is renewed and it's out of my list uh, and then the last one is uh, a new one that I will add so I click on the logo uh, I just need to link it to the Flanders Road database or Wegen register so it's linked on this segment of the Wegen register 
uh, then the, the application knows it's the N16. Uh, it's on the right side. I pick the, the date of placement. So I for the 1st of March, for instance, uh, the authority is Pures. I go to my, I said also it's a C43, also a 900 with 90 on it. And I'm my second also automatically there's a support added to the bunch of uh, traffic signs. My second uh, plate is a B9, that's a 400. So I add it also. Uh, then my traffic sign is completed. So I can check everything. I can change uh, my diameter of the support when it's uh, on concrete or uh, just on uh, soil. I can choose here uh, every everything I can manage. I and mean, it's okay, I just click on okay. And you see when I close this one, uh, I added this uh, extra uh, there are a whole bunch of C43s uh, for the, uh, here, but uh, this is the new one I added. I can also uh, see on my dates, uh, check control, and that's very important for the TNATS for the for here and TomTom -tom, to know this date or last change, uh, 15 3, 15 3, uh, the 15th of March is today, so they can uh, when they uh, get the TNTS service, they can um, filter on that and then uh, took the change as, as, uh, as real. So uh, it's very important. So uh, when I go back to moving, it takes a while, but I when I refresh and I go uh, back to the place where I did some, uh, it's about here, I think uh, normally, Mm. I can find it and more. No, normally they, but it takes a while, but normally all the, the, the recently uh, changed uh, traffic signs will be with a full uh, circle around it. So, uh, you know, you have recently uh, checked these ones and you have to check all uh, along uh, the where there are no recent controls or checks on it. Um, that's in brief what uh, you can yeah, here in the GUI you have uh, you can do the same direct oh, somebody muted me I think um, so uh, you have here in the GUI, you can uh, do the same things directly on the database. So you don't have to use moving, but it's a, a very simple uh, thing to uh, maintain or to update your traffic sign database. Uh, a quick review to uh, the TNATS REST data set. So you see uh, the links uh, will be provided on links. Uh, so you here see the, that it are already a lot of uh, Rosetta data sets. And when I click one, you can see here uh, how it's uh, give to the TomTom uh, -tom and here so they can read it out. You see here, for instance, uh, uh, an added traffic sign uh, on the 14th of March. It was inspected the 2nd of March and then the after in the traffic sign database, it's added on the 14th of March, and you see it's a fixed traffic sign, start of motorway, and the maximum speed limit is uh, 120 kilometers an hour. So uh, um, the TNATS service translates the data to the Rosetta specs, and you can see it right here. Uh, we also have um, DATEX2, uh, to, uh, DATEX2 uh, via the Verkeerscentrum.be, we have some DATEX2 two, uh, data and uh, lean told, uh, all everything is uh, put on Geopunt. So can, you can uh, find it uh, mobility, transport over land, 
uh, the Verkeersborn in Flanders. So you can see the locations of the, tra uh, the, the traffic signs or um, the derived uh, speed limits. Uh, when you use our uh, open data link, uh, our VMS, you can also uh, check out the derived uh, speedway zones or uh, uh, all the other zone 30 or zone uh, 50 and all the other ones. So that's uh, my demo, about 50 minutes, 20 minutes perhaps. So uh, over to the questions. Um, the first question is, will other map makers also be involved? Uh, for instance, Google Maps, Waze, OpenStreetMap. Um, we already talked to Waze um, and yeah, their uh, viewpoint was that they find their input from the community very important. So they, they know that our data exists, but they, um, as far as we know, we, they are not uh, really using it because they think their own uh, information is, is uh, yeah, from, from the best quality. Um, how, how they deal with a very varying data quality. Yeah, that, um, that is, an important uh, point um, and we we try to deal with it to uh, by giving them access to the the dates so the date of last uh, of the inspection on terrain and also the date of the last edit um, and also they only uh, get the the updates uh, that are done so they don't uh, uh, really need to take into account all the the old data so they only get the the changes the updates and we we think that these updates are are always uh yeah a, a better than the, the the old data yeah Stephen, it's in fact yeah it's the tnts service but uh it was before uh effectively uh the rosette uh, specs Um, yeah, the crowdsource data, that is something we we want to look into, but uh, um, for our process with our applications, the, the bottleneck is the, the Ver Verkeersborde Vlaanderen application, because in Movin you can do these inspections, you can uh, say what is wrong um, uh, on terrain, but uh, someone has to um, um, go uh, over all these inspections to really make the changes in the database. So if we would uh, make moving publicly available, the, the people at the local authorities would have a, a very large list of inspections to, to cover. But um, we we want yeah to take this into account and try to, to look at how we, we can solve that. But it's a very interesting uh, uh, thing to look at, yeah, of course. I think the last question, probably Stephen. Yeah, so currently we have no contacts with the Brussels or Walloon um, authorities. Uh, we have tried a number of times reaching out to them and well, bottom line is that there is not always the possibility to um, work on setting up the NITS service for many different reasons it could be that the priority is on dynamic data it could often there is an issue on resources often there is an issue on source data and tools um, bottom line is we yeah it's it has not realized or materialized and we are of course very welcome um, to um, explain tnits to them to Brussels and, and Walloon authorities to educate them, to 
convince them of the of the benefits that setting up these services has for the authorities themselves that's important and of course the benefits for for their citizens um, it's it's a pity um, but I, I would also say it's not um, unique to the Belgian situation we have um, in Europe other regions where the responsibilities uh, and the I should say commitments are are um, diverse uh, only in a few countries uh, especially in the Nordics um, you have like these kind of unique federal uh, road administrations and that's a one-stop shop and that's uh, of course the ideal situation if, if you think about Germany the responsibility is distributed over um, provinces or Bundesländer as they're called and there it's very difficult to um, introduce TNITS on that level um, there is now I understand in Germany a federal uh, organization that's been put into place for the highest road classes motorways and we hope that we will co cooperate with them in the future to set up this type of data exchange um, also the, the situation is problematic in uh, in France and in Italy for the rest I mean typically the smaller the country is the, the easier it is to, um, to to get things moving okay are there uh, any questions left I, I think we covered them all then maybe I can um, come back on Tim's question on how to how do map makers deal with varying data quality. Um, I've worked for one of the leading map makers for almost 20 years, so I'm well positioned to um, to give an answer on that. So typically, there is like a, um, a system in place that um, evaluates different sources of changes, either from floating car data. From authoritative data such as TNITS, from <clears throat> uh, other type of GIS data, from active user input, people complaining like, okay, the, the speed limit for my road is completely wrong. Uh, let's put it on 50. Uh, so that happens. So there's a, a system in place which um, assigns values to different input streams. And as it is now, uh, authoritative data such as TNITS can trump other uh, types of data. So there's kind of a trumping mechanism in place. And finally, um, depending on certain thresholds or whether certain thresholds are met or not met, uh, um, an automatic update uh, is generated and the map is updated. Uh, if a certain threshold of confidence is not met, then it goes to a manual um, review stream and then operators evaluate what is the best source to rely on to um, to make an update if there is a decision that i mean the input um, information is not of sufficient quality then that can be um, um, fed back to the the provider either a person actively submitting a change request or uh, the authorities as i've mentioned before for floating car data of course that that doesn't work and you <laughs> You cannot send back uh, an observation from a car uh, that that's that chain is not uh, is not implemented and that's also the interesting thing about the feedback loop i think yeah, that we can uh, give uh, feedback from the map makers to the the authorities for example so that is something we really want to look into so currently um in pilot phase we have provided so we the map makers have provided feedback related to successful matches of location references or unsuccessful matches um that's um, that's probably the most important uh, feedback information on mid and longer term uh, this feedback can also 
uh, act as a way to um, inform um, authorities of changes on on a network that is observed from an other source than what is um, you know what they mentioned as as a potential change. Uh, yes. But that's part of the um, yeah you know, ongoing discussion with the mapping industry and authorities uh, in Europe. Okay. Okay, are there more questions or uh, maybe we uh, can uh, conclude this session? I don't see any questions coming in, so I suggest that we conclude the session, as Lynn said. I want to thank Yirlin and Stefan for this session. Um, and I will end the recording now, but I will keep the room open for two more minutes if there are maybe um, any questions coming up in the chat. Okay. Good morning, everyone. And